Hola amigos, we are on a working vacation and today we're gonna to edit some of our photos in Lightroom Classic using the Loop Deck Plus. We're staying at the beautiful Hotelito Azul in Tulum and we have a ton of amazing photos we'll be taking on this trip. And of course, this is our normal <laughs> travel work situation is to sit at a desk on the beach. And today, as we're recording this, they just announced the new Loop Deck CT, which is a smaller version of all this, but today we're playing with the big guy. We're gonna start by looking at raw photos coming out of our 5D Mark IV. It's gonna be a different process if you're editing phone photos. We'll do those a little bit later. But if it's got smart HDR or something similar applied, then it's already pretty heavily processed. So the workflow is a little bit different. We're looking at a variety of photos that we've shot on this trip. Anya already went through some of the days we've been out and found some selects. I've talked about in previous videos the way that we do this using the star rating system. Stars are a lot more useful than using the picks. And on the loop deck, the C1 is to pick and the C2 is to reject. And we've got one, two, three, four, five star ratings. Generally three means it's basically usable and four means we will definitely use it. Let's start with a photo that can use a lot of work. You can see it's actually pretty underexposed. So the first thing I will start by doing is bring the exposure to approximately the right place. Even though exposure is a slider in Lightroom and a dial on the loop deck, don't just think about it as one control. Exposure is the overall sort of brightness and balance between the highlights and shadows of your photo. So I like to think about exposure in terms of all of those sliders combined. And then we're gonna tweak the temperature. I've talked about this before, but skin tones are the most important thing, something you definitely gotta get a feel for to do it correctly. So now I'm gonna bring the highlights way down. I like to start there. I find that shadows can make the photo look weird faster. So if I reset everything here, this is back to the original, and I first just boost the shadows, um, things start looking pretty fake in HDR right away. Let's reset that. And instead I bring up exposure first and then bring down the highlights. It's a much more natural look. So then in the end, typically I'll only bring the shadows up a little bit, whereas the highlights are brought way down, maybe not a hundred, but somewhere like, you know, 90. My lens was fogging up a lot on this trip, so I had a little bit of clarity. And in this case, since everything's blown out so much, I will bring the whites down a little bit, but generally I stick with the highlights more than the whites. Let's bring the blacks up a little as well. Now that we've extracted all the information we can from the raw file, we'll open it up in Photoshop. And this is where we'll do more precise editing. Good example is maybe we need to remove an object like this box back here. Do a little bit of dodging and burning. Now that it's touched up, I'll try applying all my presets one by one, see which one kind of fits. It's like that for the most part, but it kind of made her skin a little too orange. So let's bring it back to being a little bit greener. And um, what else? I like these greens to be a little more blue, I'd say. Let's look for the next photo we're gonna edit. I'll sift down to the four stars because I already tried to pick some of the ones we would use in this tutorial. How about one of these? So at first glance, this seems like it's totally correct, but what's really interesting is that as you start moving the dials, uh, I'm gonna go exposure up a little bit, uh, make this a little bit cooler. You can start to see that what seemed completely accurate at first feels wrong once you've made some adjustments. The lighting in this image balances dynamic range really well, so I only need to bring up the shadows a little bit for those trees in the back, but that's that's all I'm really gonna do. Then we go into Photoshop real quick. And now that those electrical boxes are gone, we can focus on the color a little bit more. So again, I'm gonna start by applying some presets. I think they brought her skin to be a little bit too red. So again, let's neutralize that orange a bit, bring it back to a uh, safe skin tone. Also these skies, I think it'd be a little bit darker. And let's bring out those greens a little bit. A lot of the time greens you're gonna find are actually in yellows. Like if you crank the yellows, you'll see the greens start to glow more than you'd expect. You can take a look at the before and after. That's a, that's a pretty nice pop to it. Let's work on something completely different. This will be real quick because it already looks pretty great. Just a simple overhead drone photo. I think like the clarity really helps out there. Actually increasing the contrast a bit and the exposure down. Keep in mind that your exposure and your contrast are very related to each other. Um, they will affect the same things in similar ways. So careful as you move them. Now let's uh, mess around with this water a bit. So obviously it's extremely blue. It looks perfect as it is. But if you want it to be a little more perfect, let's find... We can make it more blue and less green if we wanted. And I think I'd also bring the luminance up a little bit. More saturation too. Move that all of it, all of it. We'll just pump it. Now let's take a look at that before and after. 
Okay, looking good. I think the sand could be a little more yellow, though. And there we go. Nice before and after. Don't even need a preset on that one. All right, let's dig into a photo that seems pretty far off at first glance, a little bit underexposed, which I find often helps with dynamic range. So sometimes this is intentional. So you can see how I can bring back these clouds. If it was overexposed, those clouds would be completely gone. Once we have a decently balanced exposure, actually let's bring up the shadows a little bit. Then we move to the temperature. She could be a little bit warmer. Again, it's good to go too far and then back it off until you get to just the right spot. And in this image, the fact that we're shooting in overcast light actually washes away some of the saturation. So I'm gonna just bring it back a bit. And I find if you actually crank the saturation too far, like this is way too far here. Let's go, let's go way, way up. So now we're, we're like 66, it's way, way too far, but it gives you a much better idea of what accurate white balance should be. So sometimes I'll crank the saturation, try to dial it in a bit. And if it looks perfect oversaturated, then when you bring it back down, you kind of know that you'll be safe. And after a few basics in Photoshop, we're ready for presets again. Anya, which preset do you like? One, two, three, four, or five? Two, I think. Let me see again. Yeah, two. And I think that is about right. I don't really need to change anything else here. Maybe I'll bring the whites down a little bit. I don't like to see whites ever get close to clipping. Shadows come up a little. I think they're a bit too dark before. But yeah, looking good, right? The greens can come down a little bit. So our greens can get a little less saturated, but at the same time, we can also make them a little more bright. This photo should be really colorful, but it looks kind of dull straight out of camera. Let's bring up the exposure first, warm up the temperature a little bit, a little more exposure, a bit more saturation as well. Uh, now let's do vibrance on this one even more even a little bit of shadows, bring down the highlights, go too far first. Yeah, recover some of those leaves in the top there. And there, I think we're good. Here's one of those images you can completely turn around in just a few moves. Look at this, exposure, up, highlights, down, temperature, warmer, satur or vibrance first, up a bit, still a little more exposure, down in the highlights, just keep playing with those until we get it right where we need it. There we go, before and after. Look at that, complete transformation. In this photo, the shadows really drained all the saturation out, so I'm just gonna bring exposure up, temperature a little bit warmer, because generally the shadows are cooler, so she's standing in the shade, and you need to compensate for that. Let's see if there's anything in the highlights to save. Well, there's a little bit of sky. Uh, now we'll need to bring exposure back up to fix that. Temperature's still a little too cool. Tint could be a little, uh, I don't know what, actually, let's just reset it. That was about right. And bring the vibrance back up because, like I said, the shadow eats it away. Let's throw it into Photoshop real quick. Make just some very small touch-up changes and now go through our presets to see what we like. I mean, I definitely want to keep the saturation in here too. Looks pretty nice. Bring that exposure back up. Bring the contrast down. The shadows are kind of deeper than they need to be. Skin is a little too red, a little too orangey pinky. There, it's looking pretty nice. Now let's edit some iPhone photos. This is a bit of a different story because Smart HDR has already done a lot of the processing before it gets inside of the computer, so we don't need to edit it as heavily. By the way, if you want to know more about all of this, go to stallmanpodcast.com where we talk about a lot of this stuff in detail. I mean, a video is just five to 10 minutes. In an hour, I talk to a creator about how they do their workflow. There's a lot more over there. Back to the photos though. So there are a few things this could use. I mean, it basically came out correct, but I'd say it's a little bit dark. Bring that up a little bit. Also, maybe a little bit cool. I mean, the storming clouds make it a little less vibrant than it could be. Speaking of, I'll turn the vibrance up. In case you don't know the difference between vibrance and saturation, saturation is gonna attack the skin tones equally with everything else, whereas Vibrance tries to bring up everything but with uh, preservation of the skin tones. And Smart HDR does so much to preserve the highlights and shadows already, I kind of don't need to mess with it much. It's usually uh, kind of outsmarting me in terms of what will look good. Here's one I could actually do something to. It is definitely too warm. Doesn't need a lot of change. First, I'll start with temperature. You can see her skin starts to get a little purple. It's something pretty common as it cools down. So we will take some of that magenta out by making it a little greener until we find a perfect balance. 
maybe a tiny bit brighter too. These ones look pretty cool right out of the phone. I don't know how much improving I can do. Maybe if I bring the luminance of those greens up a little bit and I'll bring the hue towards yellow a bit. And let's make that blue really pop. Uh, blue and cyan, which one is it? There we go, lighter. Yeah, okay, wait, wait, wait. Not, not brighter, because then the sky gets too bright. How about uh, the hue, we bring it towards cyan a bit. That's actually a big part about getting a filmic look is just making your blues more cyan and it'll get you a lot of the way there. These photos are looking great. Lightroom and Loop Deck give you a ton of control over your photography. If you're on the go and you're editing on your phone, we've got a video all about our mobile editing workflow. So check that one out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.